What's up guys, Luckless Ninja here, bringing you a beginner's guide to Wukong. So Wukong... I don't even know how to describe this guy. He's weird and awesome, and he's one of my favorite guys in the game. Anyway, what he does is he comes out of nowhere from invisibility, jumps into the middle of the enemy team, spins around, knocking everyone up, dealing massive damage, and basically one man carrying every team fight he's in. You guys will see what I mean. So, as Wukong is a jungler here, we're going to start off with some pretty standard jungler items, picking up a Hunter's Talisman, three health pots, and a Warding Totem. The right, reason we go health pots, especially on Wukong, over refill pot, is because Wukong needs the extra health early on. He doesn't have a whole ton of lifesteal or damage mitigation or regen or anything. He's just got a little bit of um, damage reduction, let's say, from his W. And you guys will see what I mean after I go over his skills. Alright, so as always, let's start off with the passive. Wukong's passive is called Stone Skin. He gets bonus armor and MR per every enemy champion nearby. So, for example, at the moment it gives me four for each enemy champion. So, if one is nearby, like this Ivern here, I'm gonna get four more armor and MR. But, if there were, say, five nearby, I'd get a whole 20 bonus armor and MR. Which isn't bad. Doesn't help us much in the jungle, though. Alright, your Q is called Crushing Blow. It's basically an auto attack reset, gives you a little bit of extra range on the attack, and most importantly, it shreds armor, which is pretty cool. Alright. Say thank you for the leash. And then our W, which you guys saw me use there, is Wukong's clone. What it does is it drops another Wukong who looks just like your champion and can be used to tank hits from jungle monsters or block skill shots or whatever but it also makes Wukong go invisible for just a couple seconds this is great for initiating, it's great for getting out, it's great for juking things basically everything Wukong wants to do he can do with his clone and it's very important when you're using your clone that you want to drop it just as the monster is about to attack. Like fighting the red buff there, I wanted to drop it just as he raised his arm to slash at me. Okay, because that way it'll tank two hits for you, as opposed to just one otherwise. All right. And then your E is Nimbus Strike. Okay, Wukong rushes at target enemy and deals damage. Also hitting two nearby other enemies. Additionally, Wukong gets bonus attack speed. So this is what we're going to max out first. It's what we're going to be using as our main source of damage throughout the game. That's pretty good. It helps with clearing the jungle because of the bonus attack speed and the AoE damage from hitting multiple things. That was a really bad clone. The stun took over and I wasn't ready for it. Whatever. So kill this. And there we go. Hit this. This. And then right as he's about to attack, I want to drop the clone so it'll eat one shot and eat a second shot. Because yeah, that's as much as your clone will ever take is two shots worth of damage from the jungle. That's the most you're ever going to get it to eat up for you. Also gives a little bit of AoE damage, so it's kind of nice for clearing. Especially early on, you can just dash and then drop your clone into the chicken pit, and it'll kill all the little ones. Alright, put another point in there, and then we're going to go back. So as you guys see, Wukong doesn't have the healthiest of early clears. Um, you can occasionally go for an early gank if you do a little bit less farming early on, but Wukong's ganks before 6 really aren't all that amazing. We really just kind of want to hard farm till 6, and then we want to start ganking, because our ultimate is amazing. And let's just take a second to revel in its glory. So our ultimate is called Cyclone, and essentially what it does is Wukong spins in a circle and knocks up everyone around him, dealing tons of damage. It's not a whole bunch of damage at first. Like, at the moment, it's only 100 damage a second, which is still nothing to laugh at, in addition to a 1 second knockup. But... Once you get a little bit of armor, uh, not armor, a little bit of attack damage, 
you can be dealing 500 damage a second with this thing at rank 2. So it gets a little bit absurd. Alright, so I want to see if I can get a gank off here. So let's see. There we go. There's his flash. I'll take it. Just throw it out there that it's been used. Not too sure about the mid lane uh, Yorick. Can't say that's one I've seen before. Looks like it's not quite enough to clear those guys yet, but it gets to be there. Alright. Let's see. Can't really gank mid. It's pushed up. Unless he just walks up like this. Let's see. Nah. I don't want to waste a bunch of time. But, now that Ivern has used his flash, let's see if we can make the repeat gank. This one? I mean, I have... Let's see, 345, 330. Ah, he's gonna get out. Yeah, so if we had gone for Ivern there instead of the Caitlyn, that would have been 100% a kill. But instead of taking the guaranteed kill... Alright. Alright, let's clear out mid. So yeah, that definitely could have gone better. Should have been a free kill. Um, and just split our attention. I mean, I probably tunneled a bit too hard on the Ivern as well. But that's whatever. Alright. So just back to farming until we hit 6 then. Because once we hit 6, our ganks really start making a difference. Once we have six, we can show up, we can spin, we can knock everyone up. And even if we don't hit them with the initial spin, our ultimate does give us move speed that scales up over the course of the spin. So we do eventually deal pretty well with it. Why am I here? Yeah, that was kind of stupid on my part, not going to lie. I don't know why I was trying to steal a scuttle crab. Whatever. Use some potions. Alright. He has his ultimate. So if I just kind of hang around here, make sure he doesn't get ganked. Let's head top for the counter gank. Alright, that one's dead. And we've got red buff ticking. There we go, picking up the double kill. So there we go, we saw Elise come in top, we knew we could make a difference, and we pounced on it. Even without our ultimate, the red buff was enough to slow him down, using our flash dash to burst instantly onto the uh, little rat man and take him out. Cannon, that's the little rat man's name. Don't know why I couldn't think of it. There we go, getting our clone to tank two hits. And then maxing out our E for the increased damage, attack speed, and all the good things it comes with. And back to farming. Alright, so despite our lackluster first ultimate, we'll have another go ready in just a minute here. And then I think we head bot. They have that beautifully pink warded for me. Do that. Bash the wolves. There we go.
so that's warded. So I want to try coming around from this way. I have my slowing smite up. Alright. Using our dash to get in there. And now I need to get out. Alright. Our clone distracted her for just a second, but it was not enough to get us out there. That's okay. We picked up a kill. I'll gladly pay my life for a kill on their AD carry. Alright, pick up that, and now we're going to get started on our Black Cleaver. Now, the reason Black Cleaver is so good on Wukong is A, lots of AD, lots of cooldown reduction, and a little bit of health. All good things. Even better, though, is the percent armor shred on hit. Now, that means that over our Cyclone, we're going to be shredding a lot of armor. If we add the Crushing Blows armor penetration on top of that, that means we will be hitting these fools for next to true damage. Perhaps even bonus damage once we pick up a Maw and get some more armor, uh, yeah, armor penetration in there. So despite Wukong having a big teamfighting ultimate, like a lot of other, you know, tanky fighter junglers, we don't want to be building full tank. We're not in a Mumu that just goes flying in and locks everyone down for two seconds and job's done. We want to be able to fly in and insta-gib the AD carry. Ideally, that's what we want to do. We're really much closer to an assassin than we are to an Amumu, despite having a big AoE ultimate, which is really one of the coolest things I think there is about Wukong, is that he is this big AoE assassin. Alright, I have an ult in 10. Nalzahar ultimate? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Easy kills. Getting on top of him with my ultimate, letting him ult him, and there was nothing he could do about that. So, I think there's an Elise coming, bot. Yep. I am on my way, but she is there. Help. Okay. At least did far more damage than I thought she would. Alright, let's just kill that. And then I'm gonna leave. Jinx rocket. Jinx rocket. Am I alive? I am. Awesome. It's not at all how I expected that to turn out, but I'm glad that's how it did. <laughs> Red buff, don't kill me now. All right, I'm on my way. That's a little bit less helpful. Adapt to all situations. And the funny thing is, I still have my ultimate if we really want to do this. Because if I get Jinx to come up here, we can kill this. Alright, use my clone to tank the dragon. Fun fact, Wukong is one of the few people who can actually still negate Dragon's damage, because you can't dodge it with Jack's Counter-Strike or Pantheon Shield anymore. It's a bit weird. Alright, now our clone should kill off the three little ones. Yep, there we go. Alright, Kale's looking like she needs a bit of help up there. So I'm going to grab the boots and walk on up there, grabbing blue buff along the way. Do I really need blue buff? Probably not. But I can't say I'm really all that keen on giving it over immediately either. 
We'll see how it goes. Malzahar is doing okay, but I don't know. How's top lane looking? They're just about even in farm. Alright, your clone does eat up a lot of mana. Oh shit. Well, he's dead. Started running over as soon as I noticed, but he was already dead by then. On the plus side, this means I get to keep my blue buff. Which is always a good thing. Um, Alright, I'm gonna ping the on my way. Help, help, dash out, dash out, dash out, and I'm out. Nice. That Kale ult saving me 100%. There we go. Yes. Alright, and the reason I went in with the Cyclone immediately before even trying to get off the Crushing Blow armor reduction is that otherwise he was going to get out. Okay, He was had his move speed buff on, and in that half second it would take for Crushing Blow to go off, I don't know how much farther he would have gotten with his little teleport rat skill and it would have been much harder to catch him and kill him well there's a dude there y'all need to be careful but 4, 1, and 2 on the Wukong looking pretty good use our clone here to help us heal up just a little bit alright and now basically just gonna sit here and make sure they can't tank the turret. That was a really bad use of the maiden. Like I don't, I don't know what the plan was there. <laughs> he just threw it down under the tower for no reason whatsoever. All right. Let's see. Got ult in ten. So they're still here. And she's dead. And he's dead. And there we go. The power of the Wukong ultimate. Using that handy dandy brush Ivern gave us there to kill him. Ah, feels good. And that's going to be a turret for us as well. So we're doing some work this game. Picking up some kills. Getting our lanes ahead doing some jungler things. Alright, now I think I want to go back, because I can just about get my Black Cleaver, right? Nope. Alright. Well then, let's try farming up for the Black Cleaver. I want to get that as soon as possible, because that armor shred is just so good. I thought Riot was supposed to fix auto-canceling this patch. Oh well. Alright, Ward. Help. Help. Yep. <sighs> Unfortunate. Looking like they were all setting up to be mid. So that was really bad timing for me to try and go for a Scuttle Crab. Looks like I will be able to get my Black Cleaver, though, in just a minute here. So I will at least get a fair bit stronger, I think. I have to wait a couple seconds, but that's okay. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Dragon will be up soon, so we want to start taking a look towards that if we can. 49.50. There's our Black Cleaver. Alright, and now... I want to show up and I want to demonstrate the power of a Wukong with Black Cleaver.
Alright. I got one. Not really the most important one, but a kill is a kill. I think we just need to leave. Cannon ult coming out. Gonna be getting a ton of stuns. And oh man. Yeah, getting stuck inside that wall was really less than ideal, because I can't auto to get out, and I don't want to stop my ult, because I want to be able to knock him up. Dang. Alright, but now that we have our Black Cleaver, it's time for us to get tanky. If we were a top lane Wukong with a bit more money we could get access to, we might go for more damage, just because it's so good on Wukong. Alright, there's a flash at least, for my trouble. I can't even jump on the Caitlyn. Huh, they changed the health indicator on that, it's weird. Alright. Let's set off the Caitlyn traps while we can. And yeah, I'm gonna go for a dragon. Still got a little while on smite. So let's see if we can't kill Yorick first. You got it. Yorick's just pushing ahead. He will get the turret. 380, 415. Won't you join me? Alright, give him the kill. There's an Ivern. I don't think we're going to be able to catch him, so let's just go for a dragon instead. Alright, let's do it. Use a clone to tank the dragon. And smite at 600. be picking up a kill on the back side of it too. No complaints. My journey's only beginning. Jinx is up top. I don't think she'll be taking blue buff. So a clone just to make sure that all those little ones die. Kill that. And then farm our way top. Alright, so at this point, I don't really need blue buff anymore, but there's no one else around to take it. I don't really want to leave a blue buff just sitting around for hours. Probably could, because we've got decent map control at the moment, but I'd still rather not, if at all possible. This kettle crab died really fast. Yeah, just, just leave. We have vision. We'll know if they go for it. And there's the clone. So yeah, you can use the clone to get yourself out of a lot of tight situations. Alright, rip Janna. Or you just drop it immediately before the skill shot lands if you've got quick enough reflexes. Like, just this game alone, it could eat an Elise Cocoon for us, it could eat the Ivern stun. Um, it could eat Kennen Shuriken. And I'm out. Alright, I'm just going to clone out. was going to try and smite him, but that didn't happen, and I wasn't going to go back in to just to get a smite. Alright. 7, 3, and 4, doing some work, going flying in 1 versus 4 to pick up a kill there. Not usually the best tactic, but it worked out okay there. Especially as I had a flash to get out later. Alright, so Yorick here is going to be a bit difficult, I think. There he is. Alright, I think he's going down. There we go. Two more kills for the Mad Monkey. Alright, 
let's see. And she should be dead. Yep. Nice. Good work all around. Let's go for bot turret. We have minions on it. Um, Yorick will be back up soon. I should be able to clone out of any trouble. Alright, I might be in trouble. Might be in trouble. Nah, 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 I'm fine. Cool. So there we go. Had a feeling when those uh, shady shadows or whatever they're called started running at me. Spooky ghosties. Alright, let's pick up the scuttle crab for some health here, and then we have our ultimate again. So let's let's see. You got it. Can we find a Caitlyn running around in the jungle? I really don't think she needed to tank that for me, but more power to her. See, I want to go in, but they've got that pink ward there, which means they'll see me coming. Knock up. More kill. And there we go. And we are doing some work on the Wukong jungle. Um, Dragon is up in 30 seconds. So I'm going to go back, and then I'll rush right back with my dead mans, and start work on a maw next. Since we are so far ahead, we can afford to get a little bit less tankiness and a lot more damage with maw over spirit visage. And now that we have our dead mans plate, we can run really stupid fast while invis, and we can get fights started from really far away. Alright, let's kill it. Alright, smite at 760. No one saw that. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. <laughs> he ignited the clone. That's awesome. I love it when the clone works out like that. And there's another kill. Doo -doo -doo. And I'm over here now. Alright, so that's a stop juke. It's essentially where instead of actually using your clone to run away, you just press S. And then the enemy, seeing Wukong stop in place, that being what the S button does, has to assume that you've run away. Because after all, why would you just stop randomly in the middle of nowhere? Then you have just that couple extra seconds There we go. Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, uh, stop jukes. 
You press S, you see which way the enemy runs, and it gives you a chance to plan out exactly where you're going in those couple seconds where they think it's just your clone. And then by the time they realize that it was you, you've cloned out and you're somewhere else. It's a really cool play. It works out from time to time. Doesn't always. Important to note that some people will call you on it or just ignore the fact that you may have cloned. I don't want to go in on that. I'll probably die. And I am worth a little bit of money at the moment. Yeah, especially without an ultimate or flash. Alright, pick up that, pick up that. We're going to be doing quite a bit more damage now. Which, considering we can already almost pop Caitlyn with just an E and a Q, is absolutely disgusting. The amount of damage we can put out is absolutely absurd. No, 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 no. Come here, Caitlyn. It's fine. Our ultimate now does... what? 400 damage a second? Seems fine to me. Along with applying Black Cleaver stacks every time it ticks. Oh. They stunned me. Alright. Let's see. Um, Jinx is bot, so we want to... We want to back off. Let's wait for her to get red buff. And then... Then let the glorious fighting begin. Jinx, kill the red buff. You're an 80 carry with two items. How long can it take? Anyway. Alright. Now. The second anything happens... Alright, there we go. Alright. Kennen coming in and getting the big four man ultimate off is a little bit not so good. But there we go. Picking up a double kill for Jinx will be pretty damn good. And then I can dash out. Oh, that's two for three. Not the best it could have gone, but could have gone much, much worse, too. So I'll take it. Oh, come on. You're going to cancel my back, aren't you? Scumbag. He's going to get himself killed for it. So, I'll take it. <laughs> I will very definitely take it. And now I'm going to tank up some more. Because as I can kill just about anyone on their team, there is not much of a reason to keep going for more damage. Because I'm not going to be able to tear through the Yorick no matter what I build. So, I may as well... Let's see if we can... Can we set up for Baron? Because Yorick's still dead for a minute. If we can even just live in this top part of the jungle looking for picks. There we go. Just use the clone to eat the damage. Right, there's an Elise. If we can kill that. Okay. And she's dead. Alright. Jinx has shown up. And there we go! Easy ace. So stealthing, flashing over the wall, jumping on top of the cannon and the AD carry. And just generally trying to deal as much damage as I can in the fights. Because really, Wukong is not about CCing with his ultimate. It's a big help, it gets fights started. But he is, first and foremost, an assassin, a slayer of men. We want to kill things. We want to deal damage. And we are pretty dang good at it. And it looks like that's going to be the end of this one. So just knocking down the final turrets, taking the win. 17, 3, and 16 
on the monkey. Over 30 kill assists, all told. So anyways, um, that's Wukong. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. So as you guys see, Wukong is just this semi-tanky, massive damage dealing, initiating, team fighting god who just goes flying in, spins up, gets a kill, and then just jukes in and out of fights with his clone, doing damage all the time. Anyway, I hope you guys did like it. Um, let's go take a look at the post-game stats really quick and just see how we did and talk about maybe some other things we could do for the build if we, you know, if it went later or something. Alright, so here is the post-game lobby. Now let's just take a look here. Getting an A-plus on the Wukong. I'm really surprised that's not an S. 17, 3, and 16. Apparently we're not good enough. Anyway, let's take a look at the damage dealt. Highest in the game, over both 80 carries, over Malzahar, over a Kennen who got off multiple 5-man, well, not 5-man, but multi-man AoE ultimates. We did a lot of damage, and that's what we're looking to do here on Wukong. So anyway, let's just take a look at our final build here real quick. What we had, what we could have gone for, what we could have swapped out for instead. So starting off, picking up the warrior. This is generally what you want to go for. The smite's really good, gives you a lot of attack damage, a lot of cooldown reduction. It's a good place to start. This one's fairly standard. You're going to start with that 99% of games. Um, if you really want to go for some more fun, try and duel some people. You could probably get challenging smite. You do auto attack a fair number, but the flat, you know, the slow tends to be better for ganks. Next up are our boots. We went for the Merc Treads this game because of all the disables and magic damage flying around. Could have gone for Ninja Tabby instead if they had a more AD focused team or if Caitlyn had been bigger. But this game I wanted to deal with the Elise stun, the Ivern stun, and the Kennen stun and try and, you know, negate as much stun time as possible. Black Cleaver next. This one is another one of those that's pretty much every game. It gives you a lot of health, a lot of attack damage, and the armor shred is just really, really good. Plus, 20% cooldown reduction is nothing to laugh at either. Alright, after that is where you can start changing things up a bit. I wanted the Dead Man's Plate so I could survive the Yorick damage, as well as a few shots from Caitlyn, and as well as the extra move speed for getting into the fight. If you're ahead and want to tank up a bit, Dead Man's Plate is the way to go. Now, if you were a bit more behind, or you wanted the slow, or you needed to super tank something that had a lot of crit, Randuin's Omen, you could probably swap in. Alternately, you could pick up the Maw next, or something like a Spirit Visage or Banshees, if you needed to tank a bunch of AP damage. It's all good things. Now, if you didn't want resistances like this, you could go for um, a Jarum's Fist. Not Jarum's Fist, but you know. Sterex Gauge, that's what I'm thinking of. It's a big fist thing. Uh, that gives you the big shield when it pops. You could pick that up as a fourth item instead, because that gives you a lot of health. It gives you the big health shield to prevent burst. So that one's another good choice. Or, if you're feeling really ballsy, you can go for a Death's Dance. Get yourself some lifesteal, some more cooldown reduction, and a ton more attack damage. Not really something you're going to get too often on Jungle Wukong, but on Top Wukong, heck yeah. Pick up a Yomu's Ghostblade, a Death Stance, and have yourself a good time. Anyway, uh, this has been Luckless Ninja's Beginner's Guide to Wukong. I hope you guys did enjoy. Go out, spin on some faces with a monkey. Have yourselves a good time. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Peace.